Sybil, can I talk to you? Yes? I'd like to ask you a few questions. What do you want to know? Can you tell me more about your order? Of course. The Red Scribes are an order of sages. Our quest is to find the answers to all the great mysteries of this world. And so you know about magic? We study magic from an essentially theoretical viewpoint. But we're not an order of magicians. Even though some of us practice healing magic, but we have nothing to do with the destructive power magic used by the Lords of the Frozen Shadows. And we know very little about that domain, unfortunately. I see. But that doesn't mean you can't research it, huh? Obviously, especially now. Any knowledge which would help us turn this war around would be helpful. But according to our archives, we were already studying magic more than five centuries ago. Oh, really? What do you know about the Ice Lords? As much as it is possible to know without having met them. In some ways, they're quite fascinating, even though the term might seem inappropriate. Listen, do they have any weaknesses that we could exploit? Not that I know of. All of the Ice Lords are powerful sorcerers. They are far more powerful than all the other magicians. They have an unlimited army. If they have a weakness, it's not that. But in spite of all this, you think there is a weakness? I do. We often imagine the Ice Lords as a vast megalithic power. But that's not true. In fact, they desperately hunger for power. Just because they pulled their powers to create the Deadwalker army doesn't mean they like each other. Their balance of power is precarious. As soon as they are done with destroying Vergil, they'll probably start killing each other. Sure, but that doesn't help us much if we have to wait until they're done. Perhaps there is a way to stir up the tensions between them. Even if for the moment, I can't think how. Perfect. So how do we kill him? Huh. <laughs> If I knew that, do you think I would keep it to myself? But I can tell you this, we do believe it's possible. We know that there are seven lords. Black Storm, Lady Crystal, Marshall Winters, the White Lady, Lord Blackfrost, the Chiller, and the Ice Duchess. Everybody knows that. We've had our asses kicked by them often enough. For sure. But in the past, there were more of them. Some scrawls talk of nine or a dozen, even of thirty lords. Of course it's confusing, and I doubt they would have freely given the information of how to kill one of them. But you can bet that some of them have died. We just have to discover how. Where do they come from? Most people believe that the lords appeared recently, at the beginning of the war. But I have found certain scrolls that lead me to believe they have been around more than three hundred years. They are originally from a region far to the north of Vertiel. For a long time, they remained there. The beginning of their conquest is quite recent. We all think that the war started ten years ago, but in fact, it is much longer, maybe even the last century. It took them a long time to escape from their region of origin. The dwarf kingdoms were in their way, and they put up a fight. <laughs> you had me going there for a moment. I'm sorry, but... Dwarves? Save it for the kids. But you're wrong. The dwarves did exist, but the Ice Lords exterminated them. Right. And I bet they also massacred all those poor dragons and goblins. You know that dragons and goblins don't exist? You're impossible. Let's change the subject. Do you know what happened to me in the temple? I'm still searching for an explanation. Something must have gone wrong during the ritual. But what was the damn ritual supposed to do? The Red Scribes have always had quite limited magical skills. I believe that the ritual was meant to increase their magical powers to try and find a way of combating the Ice Lords. But instead of channeling pure energy into each of the Scribes, the ritual called forth a conscience that settled in you. Your father called it a demon. How come I got stuck with it? A demon? That reminds me of the old texts. But I couldn't say if that's what it is. You were standing right there, so that force flowed into you. It could have been my father, or any of us, I guess. Well, that's just great. Now what do I do? I would dearly like to help you. 
But even though I have searched through all the texts I have here, I can find no reference to anything like this experience of yours, at least for now. But until we have found out more, you must try to fight against this thing. Do not allow it to get comfortable. We don't know what its intentions are or how powerful it is. It could be dangerous for you. So then, any result from the study of all these creatures of the swamps? I have discovered a few things about the small chrysalids. They are much faster, but it seems that they can only attack from close up, using their pinchers. I also noticed that the medium-sized chrysalids were slower than small ones, but they, however, can fire tiny projectiles. The sickles have a power that depends on their growth. The biggest ones are the most dangerous. Up close, their attacks can be frenetic and extremely dangerous. They can also leap onto their prey. What can you tell me about the World Heart? Many of the people on Vertiel believe that the World Heart is just a myth. There are many different beliefs from one region to another, but most of them have more in common than not. The World Heart is where life and prosperity are born. Yeah, I already heard that crap. If we were to imagine Vertiel as a living being, the World Heart is exactly what it sounds like, the heart of the world. It's what keeps the world alive. It beats and Vertiel lives from its energy. If you wish, I can try to learn more about it. Come back and see me in a few days. I'd like to ask you a few questions. What do you want to know? I am busy, mercenary. Go do what you're getting paid for. Greetings, mercenary. What can I do for you? Can I have a look at your stock? <sighs> Greetings, mercenary. What can I do? I have some questions I'd like to ask you. Do you have any idea about what's happening to me? I'm afraid I may not be able to help you. Your condition is more due to magic than medicine. Your symptoms remind me of certain mental illnesses, where the subject has the impression he hears voices in his head. And do these nutcases throw fire and have eyes burning from within, too? You'd be surprised at what they can do. But obviously, you're not like them. That being the case, if you study them, you might find some answers. In particular, I'm thinking of the fact that most of these poor madmen end up giving free reign to the darkest side of their personalities. Make sure that doesn't happen to you. Who's the big snoring elf? Show some respect, please. That's Prince Arundel. And? He's the son of the Elven King, leader of the last army standing against the Deadwalkers. Yeah, okay. But he doesn't exactly look like he's ready to stand against anything right now. What's wrong with him? What's his problem? From what I've been told, Relmar brought him here before we arrived. The prince and his men fell in an ambush. Without your friend, he wouldn't have made it out. Unfortunately, he was severely wounded, and has probably been the victim of powerful magic. I'm trying to find a cure, but without much success for the moment. I gotta go. Vulcan, you must help me. The prince is dying. Well, I'm happy to see that my talents as a doctor are finally being recognized. There's no doubt an explosion would cure him of all his ills forever. But I was actually thinking about your connections with the Red Scribes. If you could speak to them, it would save me having the prince's death on my conscience. I wouldn't exactly call myself a friend of theirs, but yeah, I can always give it a try. So, is the prince doing any better? He is still in a coma. 
He doesn't seem much better, no. I'm going to speak with the Red Scribe's doctor. He might know of a cure. Thank you. Let's change the subject. I have a few questions I need to ask you. Elves are pretty rare. I haven't had the chance to talk to many. Can you tell me more about your people? We are born in the trees, eat only seeds, and we spend all the live long day singing. I get the feeling you're fucking with me. Perish the thought. Well, it's just that we aren't that different from you humans, despite what one hears. Our civilization is obviously a bit older, so we have had the time to learn from our mistakes. We don't really live in the same rhythm as you do. We move a little slower, and most of us are prone to having at least some respect for the past. This is the reason why we never destroy anything, that we prefer to build on top of things. I've heard that you're immortal? That joke has lived for 15 generations. I will never get tired of it. No, we're not immortal. We live long lives, though, much longer than you. We are resistant to poisons, rotten food, and toxic body odor, apparently. Unfortunately, these things do not make us immortal. Don't elves ever make war? That's an impression we like to give other people. The fact is, we do go to war, just never against each other. You must understand that, given our long lifetimes, battles are fairly futile. This may well be what has motivated the choices of our king concerning the Ice Lords. But we certainly know how to fight, and you'll see proof of that soon enough. So it's the prince who gives the orders? The word orders may not be the best one. We do not submit nor obey easily. Our kings are a reference, wise men who can point out the way. They tend to guide us rather than give us orders. But to answer your question, it is his father, the king, who is the leader of our people. Who is the elf in the healing house? Is he really your prince? He is Prince Arundel, the son of our king and heir to the elven crown. Therefore, yes, he is our king. How the hell did he end up here? Prince Arundel led a detachment of the elven army sent to harass the dead walkers. And when he reached Bastion, he fell into an ambush. I got wind of this trap, but by the time I arrived, it was too late. When I caught up to the prince, he was already wounded, and most of his soldiers were dead. Those who survived covered our retreat. To here? Yes. The route to Carolthas was too dangerous. I knew about this village and felt that it would be secure for at least a little while. As soon as he gets better, we shall leave for Carolthas. The remainder of the human and elven armies are gathering there. That is where the final stage of the war will be played out. You seem different from the other elves I've met. Where are you from? Really? I seem different. And yet I have such pointy ears. And if you really want to know, I actually come from one of the most ancient and noble houses that exists. I'm even linked to the royal family. But I can assure you that I'm sufficiently far down the line of succession to be in no danger of being crowned. And my reputation is no help either. Hey, as far as bad reputations go, every mercenary's got one, so we're used to it. Let's just say that I got into enough trouble to eventually be considered a traitor to my people. When I got involved in the war, I disagreed with decisions made by the king. He thought that this war, like so many others, would not last. That the conquests won by the Ice Lords would melt away like all the human victories before them had. But I thought differently. Right from the start of hostilities, I began to requisition certain resources I felt necessary for those doing the fighting. More food, more weapons, better armor. When my people discovered what I'd done, I was declared an outlaw, and many saw me as a thief, which, in a manner of speaking, I guess I was. What a bunch of cowards. If they had listened to you, we wouldn't be in this mess. I've been telling myself that for years. But I do understand their point of view. It is flawed, but not entirely thoughtless. They have had some time to prepare their forces and to learn the strengths and weaknesses of the Deadwalker army. This knowledge might allow us to turn the tide of the war, even if it does seem too little too late at this point. Do you know these swamps? I've been in this area long enough to have explored a fair amount of it, actually. 
The region is rather inhospitable, which I suppose is a good thing under the present circumstances. A good thing? You're out of your mind. These swamps are a labyrinth. The Deadwalker scouts will never be autonomous enough to find their way to the village by themselves. That means we should be fairly safe for the moment. At least until a general or an ice lord comes to town. Except that recently, there has been a change in these swamplands. And I must admit that I no longer feel safe at all. What do you mean? Something is affecting the swamplands, corrupting the vegetation and the animals. And I have no idea what it is. But anything that grows or lives here could become a threat. So I strongly recommend that you watch where you put your feet. Let's change the subject. I need your expertise. Will you come with me? Of course I will. Lead the way. Relmar, you got a minute? Yes. We need to adjust your combat style. What would you like me to do? I'd like you to take more risks. Take the offensive. Brilliant. Just waiting for you to give the word. Sybil? Yes? I need your help, if you want. completely useless here. Mercenary. I need your help. According to the villagers, there's a beast haunting the swamp, and it's attacked them several times. I have heard about it, yes. And although I don't have any concrete information about the creature, there are some things that corroborate what they say. Even though we aren't very good at magic, we still feel it. And since we came to the swamp, we have all felt a powerful source nearby. The problem is that the source seems distorted, corrupted. Kind of like the one the Ice Lords use, only not the same. I hope for your sake that you're right about that. Otherwise, we're really up shit creek. We are very certain of it, but this magic could very well have transformed one or more creatures in the swamp, making them more aggressive, bigger, who knows? Something to frighten the villagers, in any case. So, you're telling me the thing is magic and corrupted? That's great. Just what I needed. Can I do something for you? No, thank you. I don't need anything for the moment. Tell me more about your order. Before the war, our main objective in Creed was to collect and save all kinds of knowledge. We had a presence everywhere on the continent, and had chapters in every major city. We studied and preserved all possible sources of knowledge there. We also dispensed information and care. Because even though we're not the greatest magicians, our knowledge let us come to the aid of the wounded and the sick. I could, of course, relate our history in detail for hours and hours, but I doubt that is really what interests you. 
With all the knowledge accumulated by your scribes, you must have learned a few things about the Ice Lords, right? We do indeed know some of their secrets, and a good part of their history. Anything we could use to fight them? We thought we'd found a chink in their powers that our ritual was supposed to let us exploit. But you saw the result. That's one way of putting it. That said, I'm beginning to wonder if we haven't involuntarily brought about the conditions for their end. I don't get you. What you have within you could well turn out to be their doom. Even if I don't have the faintest idea of how or why. And unfortunately, as long as we don't know more about it, we also have to fear that it might lead to our doom, too. I'll be going now. you here the captain wants me to help your village you got a job I can do with our shortages of food and fighting men our worn-out equipment and the growing lines at the healing house I cannot deny our village is sorely in need of help sadly I fear that these are not the sort of problems you are used to dealing with unless I'm much mistaken maybe I'll surprise you So what's the problem with the healing house? Quite simply, Mirana cannot keep up. She spends every waking minute giving out supplies to the refugees and refuses to admit that she cannot help everyone. She thinks she's fooling me. I have heard rumors that her food stock is running low. Unsurprisingly, the crowds outside are becoming restless. I believe they wish to continue handing out our food reserves as though they were unlimited. This is not the case, and thus, it is not an option. So, you want someone to put her down? Why, I never suggested any such thing. I just wish she would see reason, for all our sakes. But I have asked nothing of you. I was merely answering your question. Your sentries, how can I put this? At first I thought they were disobeying orders. Now, I think maybe they don't even understand them. If you're stupid and incompetent, you should be digging turnips, not taking care of security. You're beginning to worry me. Is it really that bad? Are you kidding me? The state of their weapons is enough to make you cry. Maybe they'd be good for splitting logs. Personally, I'm not capable of judging the aptitude of our sentries, but their poor results speak for themselves. Doubtless, you should share your observations with Mason, the Chief of the Watch. I should warn you, however, that he is of a somewhat stubborn nature. Wouldn't be the first I've seen. I need the reports about this beast that attacked the villagers. I fear I am unable to be of help. I am still not entirely convinced that it even exists. All I know is that several villagers have vanished. One villager is at present in the doctor's care, following a supposed encounter with the said beast. These swamps are crawling with dangers. There is nothing to suggest anything out of the ordinary. The refugees are always inventing horror stories in an attempt to force us to open our gates and let them inside. It might be worth checking out. You said you lost one of your patrols, right? That is so. You should speak with Randvold. He was most anxious to go out and hunt the beast down, but we needed him here. Now that we have more able bodies to guard our gates, I imagine he would be keen to pick up the scent once more. I've got a few questions I'd like to ask about this village. I imagine there are few who are better placed than myself to answer them. How come it's you that's running the show here? <laughs> what a question. Because, my friend, someone has to. You imagine I'm doing this for my amusement, perhaps? Doubtless you wish it was someone else. 
The chief of the watch has trouble organizing three peasants. Our dear apothecary is evidently keen to give succor to any and every poor soul who wanders into the healing house. And regardless of your reputation, the people of this village would never trust outsiders such as yourself, or even the Red Scribes. So yes, it is indeed I who command here. The one-time steward of the hunting lodge of Valvanor, now leader of this... shithole. Well, hell. I'm glad we got that cleared up. What can you tell me about the people of Valvanor? Before the war, there were just a few families here. Hunters and craftsmen, mostly. These days, they survive as best they can, husbanding their animals and digging up the puny vegetables they've managed to grow. Few dare to venture outside the walls. These woods are fruitful, but more perilous than ever before, and most of these folk know nothing of arms. But you've got your guards. They hardly qualify as an armed militia. Of the few that remain, most are sturdy farmers whom we have entrusted with some kind of weapon. Most of the real fighters left the village as soon as war broke out. The others died while out on patrol. The only one left here with any real experience is Mason, the head of the guard. Sadly, the man is a walking beer keg who could not give a dog's fart for what his men are about. Who are all those refugees that you're keeping outside the walls? The war with the Ice Lords has driven many from their homes and villages. Alas, it would seem that some of them found their way here. I have tried to accommodate as many as we can, and provide as much comfort as possible, but I fear we can do little more. We are reaching the end of our reserves, and relations between the refugees and the villagers are becoming strained. The refugees can't all be dead weight. Some of them have got to be useful. Oh, if only. Believe me, I would be the first to welcome them. These peasants have been fleeing from town to town and from camp to camp for months. The best and strongest of them perished in battles somewhere along the way. I must deal with the leftovers. I put the biggest of them in the watch, but they are of little use. The healing house. It's a pretty good thing for your village, huh? If you say so. As time has gone by, the Healing House has drawn refugees to the swamps in ever greater numbers and dissuaded some malingerers from returning to their families. When it opened its doors a year ago, the sense of relief was palpable. It was run by a couple, an elf doctor and his apothecary wife, who clearly were no strangers to the healing arts. Thanks to them, we were spared many plagues. But as the war dragged on, the endless tide of refugees continued to flow through our gates until we could harbor no more. Six months ago, our worst nightmares were fulfilled. Our elf doctor fell ill and died. Since then, Mirana has soldiered on without rest, alone. I do not know how much longer she can keep going. The refugees just keep on coming, and I fear that poor woman is beginning to crumble under the strain. It's not surprising. I need a blacksmith. Do you have one here? With none more qualified, I asked Asiel to take over the village forge. I suppose I should warn you, he's quite a tricky character. He has a huge ego and is stubborn as an ox. Before the war, he was a sort of artist. He crafted jewelry and sculptures from metal. Despite running the forge, one could hardly call him a blacksmith. But he's the only one here who had even the vaguest notion of how to repair a shovel or straighten a blade. We'll talk again later.
The stewards said there was a beast attacking the villagers. This is what one hears, yes. Something is wandering through the swamps, devouring the reckless. The saddest part is that it's often the guards who end up lost, along with their equipment. Meanwhile, we are overrun with refugees who serve no useful purpose at all. Show me what you have for sale. So? I need more info about Valvanor. And you have decided that I have a sympathetic face. It's the story of my life. Talent worthy of a king's ransom, but surrounded by cretins who only seek that which is free. What can you tell me about the steward? Oh, don't expect me to say anything bad about Bert Hoff Chambriad. I'm not always in agreement with him, but I can see that he knows his business. And he keeps the village relatively safe. Let's talk about... I'll be back. That's an excellent... Do I have to spill it out, or should I just put my boot in your arse? Clear off! Would you just shut your stupid mouth for two seconds, please? The steward sent me here to help you. Oh, that's all I need. Don't he think I got enough on my plate? Now he sends me some ore blade from God's nowhere! Hey, as long as it ain't me is paying for you, hey? You wanna help? Knock yourself out. But I warn you, there's plenty to do. Get to the point before I set a torch to your breath. All right, take it easy. No need to get nasty, eh? You want help? Yes or no? Keep talking. Well, for a start, you could try and find one of my patrols that's gone missing. At first, I thought maybe one of those halfwits was sleeping it off under a tree somewhere. But it's been a while now. Maybe something bad happened to him in the swamp. I guess I could go back and check. What a coincidence. That's exactly what I was gonna ask you. After that, well, I suppose a pro like you, I guess you would be useful helping out the sentries. It won't be luxury. I don't know if you've seen what we're supposed to fight with, but... Wow. If you can have a word with your quartermaster to see what he can do for my lads, you have my blessing. The benediction of a drunk. Better than better. It's what all us fucking mercenaries dream of. All right, I'll see what I can do. Right, we may be living in the arsehole of virtue, but being armed like a bunch of tramps, we can do without. And while you're at it, when you've been to the forge, you'll probably feel like letting off steam a bit. Why don't you go and take it out on my lads? What do you mean? Kick their arses so they can't sit down and get drunk instead of patrolling, and show them a couple of tricks while you're at it. A bit of training. Couldn't do no harm. Your men can't afford to keep their thumbs in their asses. It's time to teach them how to use those weapons. Knock yourself out, Pavelade. I'll go and shake them awake. Time to go again, while they're still warmed up. Why not? Let's go. Even so, they are making progress. If you whack them enough times, they remember how to defend themselves. Are you up for giving them one last lesson? One last lesson. 
Save their lives one day. My pleasure. I like this way of saving lives. Look at this, my favorite fucking troublemaker. About those sentry guards. Is there some place in the village where I can get your men's equipment repaired without it costing me an arm and a leg? Only one I know of is that ass, ass of yours, ass, that ass blacksmith's forge. And just talking to him usually costs me an arm, two legs, and both me bollocks. Thanks for the tip. So, where exactly did your patrol disappear? Somewhere out in the swamp, to stop the Chrysalids from regrouping too close to the village. But I specifically ordered them not to go too far. I'll handle it. I'll go find them. A lot of villagers have been complaining about a wild beast in the area. Do you know anything? Who knows if it's just one animal? The swamp's always been a bit dangerous. But since you want to know, one of my lads on the west gate swears up and down he saw something. And a patrol found another one tore up pretty bad. He's still in the healing house. Considering the bunch of cowards we got hiding in the village, if I was you, I wouldn't pay much mind to what they says. Or at least, don't go wasting your time until you got real proof. I'm going. 